You guys know how I very often say that things are really simple if you let them be. You also need to accept that everything is a season. I think if you keep yourself aware of such a cycle, such a process, you should be able to not run into any issues with stress or maintaining a certain flow. To flesh this out a little bit, let's think about how we grow and develop as living beings, as humans. But we can also extend this to non-human animals. You can observe a kitten and its phases of growth. In the same manner, you can observe a human infant with a slightly longer time frame between development stages. You can observe it from the moment it's a newborn, then it transitions into toddler, child, adolescent. Why is it that we seem to become detached that such a cycle is also true? outside of your physical maturity. Take work, for example. Management will often expect for a worker to behave and continue an output that they have associated with this certain person without taking into account that because that is not the season you're in anymore, you can expect changes. Let's pick on someone who's not a manager, which is my situation. You cannot expect for me to be down and willing to go with the flow of work and see work in the same manner that I saw it 10 years ago because my life has changed, my body has changed, my mind has changed. And of course, that's why you often see that when you hire new people, especially young people. Young people are trying to get started and in most cases they're just desperate to be making money anyway. They feel great, they have the energy, they have the body <laughs> for that, but also the naivety of what it means to work and how you work. Because if you see closely, the new people tend to be rewarded. They're given boosts for staying extra or picking up the extra shifts. But have you ever had a veteran advise you to take care of yourself, to be mindful, to not find yourself being overconsumed by those things? Because the moment that your season of contributing like that is over, you're going to experience a decline, a decline in the rewards, perhaps, that you bring home with you. So needless to say, you have just experienced a transition in which you are new, you are young, and you know what you can contribute as someone who's young without a family to maintain in most normal cases, that is usually the case. The debt that you have, unless you have something like student loans, is pretty trivial. It's very easy to maintain. I guess, except for the immediate urgency of living expenses, you should be pretty okay, pretty fine, pretty well. But when it comes to your maturity as a worker, let's say that for some reason you move up and you pursue a position of management, you ever notice how management tends to be a very cold position to inhabit. And now we are demanding and expecting changes from the human behaving as a resource, occupying those positions. We want our managers to be more empathetic, to be more accommodating, to be even parental figures in some cases for the folks who may have missed out on that kind of development at home. And I do think that it is important to expect for management to step up their game a little bit when it comes to those things like, hey, if I inform you that a close relative of mine passed on, don't be wondering about whether or not I'm going to show up for my shift today or for the rest of the week for that matter. Where is your sympathy, your empathy? If I were a manager, this is how I would handle that conversation. If a worker came up to me, I would be like, I am so sorry to hear. Let us know 
If there's anything we can do for you, we have resources available to provide you support of varying degrees whenever it's a good time for you, you know, and then let the person talk, give them an opportunity. But in that instance, if you're someone I know particularly well, my immediate urge would be to totally give you a hug because if it were me and I'm talking to a manager I trust, I would more than likely need consolation so that I can get through that process of communicating the shit to you. And then after that, as a manager, once my worker composes themselves and they take a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds, I would be like, whenever it's a good time for you, please come back so that we can discuss how we need to go about adjusting the schedule a little bit. How much time do you need? Take as much time as you need, as much time as you want. That is a given. I just need to hear directly from you what I can count on you for. You don't need to be in the mindset, right? To be spitting out exact answers, but I would plant the seed in you that, hey, as of right now, at your job setting, this is what is required of you. I need a little bit more information about your time. That's it, because you are part of a team and we count on you for certain functions, but we also understand that life happens and uh, we're not going to penalize you for life happening. So whenever it's a good time for you, again, let me know. We can get together and take it from there. But for you to just immediately be like, oh, well, uh, we had you down on the schedule to be whatever, whatever, after you have just informed me that in that time frame, some other stuff is going to be taking place in your personal life. The last thing I'll mention is any reference to work. I don't care about work. And that's the problem. If you're going to be a good manager, genuinely good at the management of people as human resources, meaning people as assets, you're going to have to give up your humanity, it seems. Because when I think about it as critically as I possibly can, the most stressed out and consumed managers I know are the managers who try to care. And unfortunately, caring is not something that seems to be a rewarding experience or something that rewards you in the long run. And the reason for that, if I were to simplify it as much as possible, is I don't think that those human traits, human perception, actually aids in productivity, which that's what we're supposed to be doing anytime we're on the clock, anytime we're working, we're supposed to be producing, 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 creating, 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 working, 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 serving, serving, serving in a environment where that's the pace that's expected from you, especially because you got to make the numbers look good. Where does sympathy, empathy, humanity, have place, have room in that. And with that said, I think that's one of the darker transition periods that you can have in your life, because I think the type of manager that you decide to be and that you decide to commit to the long term is going to determine pretty much your character as a person for the rest of your life. That's going to be that transition period. I have experience observing folks who went from being the most awesome, charismatic, lovable, just relatable, and you can definitely have a great relationship with this person. But the moment they step into management and they drink the management Kool-Aid, you start seeing the shift in this person. And don't get me wrong, I think that once you transition into a manager job, it is important for your dynamic with others to change. It has to change because now you're going from being a regular peer to actually being in a position of power, a position of authority. But I think it makes me sad that sometimes in your quest at being good at inhabiting that position of authority, you have to pretty much sacrifice certain traits that made you the likable character who you were before your quest into management. And I can also say that I have seen people in management who 
are good about maintaining that humanity in the role, but it doesn't seem that they get rewarded with advancement. It doesn't seem like they are able to move up in the ranks quite as fast or successfully as the manager who literally uses you, exploits you, and does not give a fuck about being a human towards you. A nice, high quality, understanding, accommodating, nurturing human. The reason for that is simple. When you are being managed to the extreme, managed into focusing on just work, labor, productivity, cost cutting, ultimately that's what is going to make your numbers look good. How you make people feel, how you treat them, how you build the others up, nobody takes notice of that. Where in your computer database or spreadsheet is there a section that takes into account a score coming from the workers you're managing, discussing their quality of life, their time at work, how it makes them feel, how overall they feel compensated. It's not convenient for that to be reported because that is a variable that is not going to make you look as good. And to that effect, I will never frown upon or blame the people who change their mind about being in management. If you want to care and have power, I think you need to obtain your power independently as opposed to someone bestowing it upon you in a place that you don't own. Because unfortunately, that other person is going to be the one having power over you and they get to shape you and mold you and decide what kind of manager you need to be influenced into being. And unfortunately, you know, the reality of things is we need money to survive. Therefore, some people are willing to, even if they don't agree with the politics and the culture of the company they are representing, they'll still take part in the act, fake it till they make it, and then maybe one day they can hopefully pull out but unfortunately, that trajectory you had in your time as a manager redefined your personality and we witnessed it. So for you to all of a sudden revert to your default factory settings who you were before you were a manager, for you to suddenly try to go back to that and to expect for the rest of us to be cool with you transitioning back into the normal person you were supposed to be. That's disappointing and it almost gives off the feeling that you're just a two-faced person. Like you will act fake to advance in your career, even if that's not genuinely you. And we can appreciate that you were not totally corrupted by your career goals. But unfortunately, you were serving, you were giving time and your effort and presence, your most valuable assets during that time period to accomplish your career and financial goals, that was the price that you had to pay. But then for the rest of us who remained loyal to who we actually are and the values that we like to conduct ourselves with and represent can't be supported the higher up we move, then you cannot expect to be suddenly re-welcome into our society. And the society that you belong to now is going to expect for you to continue to be that person who upholds the values of the company and the managerial society that you belong to. That's one of those instances in which I consider that to be the most climactic, transition period in your life because of the power that it'll bestow upon you. With that said, I also think the most precious transition period is the transition period in which you're constantly being taught things. Your time being nurtured, your time having your mind cultivated. I think that is the most precious time and I find that even with my experience, even with all the experience that I have obtained from my personal life as well, 
I still like to conduct myself as if I'm still a student, as if I'm still taken under somebody's wing. And I know that on me, it looks like I'm overdue to take on a new transition, which would be something like parenting, or I'm supposed to be in an official role in which I get to coach or teach. And training slash teaching would be a role that I take great pride in because I would have the approach of how can I teach this in a way where this person, after being instructed by me, does not feel like the information they received was incomplete. Anytime I have experienced a training that was subpar that was failing me because I was failing at something and that is a reflection of the poor training I got. Something that would have helped me is if someone would have pointed out a transition. Say when you're working in office work, someone should point out to you when you put this away, you're done. Or when you punch this in and you close this out, you're done clean up, organize. Those little things are means to marking a transition. And sometimes when I'm at work, I observe some people who may still backtrack into the task that we just finished. And I tell them, we're done, we're finished. You don't have to worry about that until the next day. And when I see that the shock in their face, that lets me know that this is a task, an assignment that needs to have its transitions pointed out. The beginning, the ending, the new beginning, the ending. And I think that would help people from getting lost. So that I can pass on the wisdom and culture and habits, traditions that I have obtained. But given the ever-changing continuously evolving landscape that we inhabit both at work and outside of work, I don't think that it's a good time for you to really anchor yourself into not being teachable. It makes it really hard to transition from your time as, say, having a student mindset into being the one doing that teaching. I feel like nowadays the safest thing to be is of course, permanently, life is a school. You'll never stop learning. But I think when it comes to the actual role that you play daily, I think you being in a being taught situation is probably going to have to linger for a little longer. You transitioning into that teaching role should take longer only because when you go to many places now, it seems like there aren't any true veterans ready to back you up, ready to take you under the wing. And something that inspired this that I'm describing, especially about the work setting, is I observed someone who was hired maybe some three weeks ago, four weeks ago, training someone fresh to the department, someone completely brand new. And I couldn't help but tell myself, wow, that means that now, inexperienced people are having to coach even more inexperienced people at how to do a job with the expectation being put out and incorporated that an experienced person would have. And I think that those transitions had more impact when it was conducted at the adequate time. And I think the adequate time can only be achieved when you're actually paired up with someone who is a legit veteran. So for me, if I were to become a parent, which I never will be, I think it would be rather odd and sad that I would transition into that role without having the influence that in the past was inherent to that role. I'm probably not going to have my mother's hands-on influence, given that she's far now, and I don't have that interest nor intention of leaving where I'm at. 
and uh, same as my grandmother the things that i could have obtained from her are not going to be a thing especially as she continues to do the inevitable which is aging the support that my mom counted on from her is not going to be the same as the support that i should get but i know i won't get because of my mom's position and situation along with my mom now needing to keep an eye out for grandma see what i mean the quality of the care that i would receive is not going to be the same and my grandma because she had like 10 other siblings it was very easy for her to not have to be a caregiver to her parents her aging parents when they were still around so my mom i can say had a smoother transition but my grandma had a slightly even smoother transition and the only way my mom had a smoother transition was because she was far away that transition would have been disrupted in her life and there's no telling how that would have trickled down onto me with that said i also think that another big issue with what we're observing in young people now is that young people don't seem to have those transition times defined. When you're in school, you know that elementary school transitions you into middle school. Then middle school is yet another transition into high school. After high school, you're supposed to transition into college. But in modern days, for most of us, that's not really a wise choice anymore, given the cost. Sometimes I feel like when people don't have those transitions as well defined as they used to be when we were school age that's where the confusion and the loss begins when you're a worker when do you determine it's a good time for you to transition into a higher position when do you determine it's a good time for you to move up i have met people who as soon as we hire them they may not have overwhelming experience but they want to be moving up within a month or two or three or six months I think that you can come in with the ambition, but realistically, you have to be willing to invest time into being rooted and cultivated in your role before you can even consider transitioning. When I went out to be a manager all well, those years ago, I waited three years. I waited three years after I was hired before I attempted to do such a move that's when people who already knew that i had the intention to grow with the company decided to add a little bit extra responsibilities to me just to get me familiar get me acquainted get the feel for the stream and that was great i felt like that was very sensible and very expected and that is the way that i like things anyway i don't like to just be thrown into something and hope for the best but there are some people whose ambitions are now motivated by the fact that they're desperate because of their status and their personal lives, which is understandable. And that makes you transition into a season in your life that you're not ready for, which is, say, that pressure and stress and demand of being a manager. You are attempting to take the role of being in charge when you haven't been good at having someone be the one in charge of you you need to become good at being managed before you become a manager but now the attitude i'm seeing the behavior i'm seeing is that you want the perks and the benefits of already having the position of being the sachem without actually having experience of being part of the governed class. We all are trying to be managers. If we give everybody the power and opportunity to be a manager, then there's no one taking instructions. There's no one taking orders. There's no one performing tasks. And that transition period, I think, is critical that we give it a proper definition. And even if you are someone who is excelling at a young age you still should be put through the trial of going through the process of being 
someone who's managed before you become a manager. And I'm not trying to discredit the abilities that certain young people have, that they may be a little bit advanced for their age. But again, it's all about building your character. You ever meet someone who had a lot of intellect, a lot of potential, a lot of power, but because they skipped their period of being managed, they end up in a management role and you see them that they're super fucking immature for that role. Immaturity comes from a lack of experience, from a lack of being roughed up, <laughs> pretty much. So with all this, you guys, I'm trying to just summarize the fact that your ability to recognize transitions in life are probably what make or break you. Understand when you can no longer behave like a child, when you can no longer think like a child, when you can no longer expect to be given things like a child, spend the things without consequences like a child. When you made money as a child because, say, your family gave it to you, were you good about saving it or did you want to immediately spend it on bullshit like toys and candy? I was that goddamn kid who always saved the money. I don't know why I was never into buying random shit. I had no idea that at the time, I guess I was already exhibiting the behavior of how I was going to manage my stuff, how I was going to manage my life. It worked out for me. Somehow mom's influence, whatever it was, it led me to be more of a saver as opposed to a spender. And to this day, that's still the behavior that I have. Feel free to tell me more transition periods. I think that another pivotal one is when the elders in your family begin to pass on. And then all of a sudden, it's like you inherit the role of patriarch or matriarch of the family. And I think that those are transfers of power and mentality and everything that should be taken a little bit more seriously. And I feel like we live such fast paced lives now that we really don't sit by ourselves with ourselves to think about things in this manner. Actually think about the breakdown of your family, the hierarchy of your family. And where do you feel the links are weak and where do you feel they are strong? Reinforce what needs to be reinforced. And if anything is just too strong, that it's oversaturated in strength, redirect that strength to another place. How do you manage that? How do you do that? How do you transition that strength onto the weaker links in your family? So there you guys have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I think that transitions in life is definitely an infinite topic. And I just wanted to kind of introduce it here because although it's something that I have been kind of hinting at the entire time here on the channel, I have never officially pointed things out as a season, a transition. And I think that a lot of people get confused when the transitions are not marked properly. You know that books have a transition. They are expressed in chapters. You know that when you think about it, even traffic lights are a transition. You go from traffic flowing to traffic diminishing when the light turns yellow. Like the cautionary anticipation of a transition of flowing to halting. Everything in life is a transition if you look for it. Just start looking for those things. Start looking for the transition. Even when you're cooking, you see that inedible raw piece of meat. You begin to cook it. You start seeing its transition into being safely edible. I think that's what's helped me keep my mind together and to be so calm and relatively organized about my matters in life. And I don't expect you guys to agree that this 100% makes things simple. But my goal is to help you become aware of those things because I think that we need to recognize when you are a trainee and now you're transitioning into a veteran who can train. When you are someone being managed and now you can transition into someone who can do that managing. Do not ever rush yourself into the summit when you're not 
comfortable at the foothill. That's the way I look at it. Okay. Bye.